Hi, friends. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am so excited to be here with my dear friend and one of my favorite people, Jennifer Hess. She has such a cool background. She has great expertise in experiences and events. She is the co-founder of Fly, Finger Lakes Yoga Scapes, which I had the privilege of partnering with her on one of their events. It was a glamping retreat, um, glam camping, that was super fun. Um, and she drew people from all across the world for those events. They were really cool. And I'm even more excited for her because she has recently been named the Director of Guest Experiences at the Lake House, which is a new resort opening up in Canandaigua, New York, which friends in upstate New York will recognize that lake. Um, friends who are outside the area, it's in the Finger Lakes region. It is so beautiful and the plans they have for this campus and space are out of this world. So I'm super excited to hear more from Jen about that. She is so rooted in helping people achieve personal and health goals and she just has the biggest kindest heart and I know that we're going to have some really great exchanges today. So again, thanks for being here and Jen, thank you for being here. Welcome. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Meg. I am so excited to one see your face during this time and, uh, <laughs> and I just think what you're doing is uh, wonderful. So I'm so glad to be part of it. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's get right to it and chat about confidence because having <laughs> been in your yoga class a lot, I know that that's a theme that you draw upon. And in chatting with a lot of my favorite people, I've been so curious to see how they define and create both the authenticity piece and the mm -hmm. confidence piece. So can you chat with us about how that comes up for you and, and what you're doing to honor that and, and what it looks like? Yeah, that, it's so interesting because I think confidence, confidence is not something that is, um, you get it and it's there all the time. Like I just yes. feel like there's ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. And I think that it very well might uh, correlate to when you're not being true to yourself sometimes. Yes. Um, so, you know, I think all of us have had experiences where we've lost that confidence. And I, you know, I do believe that getting grounded is super important. Um, taking for me personal time, like time uh, either early in the morning when no one is up um, or taking a walk. Uh, I, you know, I used to find it in my practice a lot, but I find it in a lot of different places now, just that time to listen in. And I think that authenticity comes from listening and then al aligning your actions to whatever that inner voice is saying. And then when yeah. you do that, then all of a sudden you're, sh you know, you are shining because you're embodying truly who you are. Right. Right. I love that connection between listening to the inner voice. So it's, it's, it's not listening to everything around you. It's yeah. really tuning inward and listening to, you know, your intuition, your heart, your gut, you, however you want to define it, inner voice right. is perfect. Um, but then also taking that next inspired action, like there, there has to be forward momentum after that. So, you know, how, how do your actions then align with what your inner voice is actually telling you is, is your truth? Right. And so often I think the things that we feel compelled to do might not be things that other people would even be thinking about you, you know, either at, as someone you are or you know, they may not know those deep dreams or, or, and so they wouldn't, they could be discouraging. So it, I think it's just really important to, to, to just kind of shut off those um, channels. And most of us are born people pleasers. Uh, so yes. it's, it, it's something you have to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you learn it? Um, you know, I think my first yoga, well, yoga, I think is definitely part of it. I, I, I came to yoga as a triathlete actually. Um, and I did it as a, just a way to stretch. So I did it really just for the physical. And I started with a Baptiste, you know, up here, breathe. Um, and, but my, the teacher I gravitated toward was an athlete, um, mm -hmm. uh, Mary Eggers, for those of you who are local. And, uh, it was her words that were so empowering. And, yeah. Um, and it started, sh I had started having like a shift then. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I did get, uh, trained in Baptiste 
uh, thinking that that first teacher training would, I'd come out like this fabulous teacher, but what that training did was really taught you all about authenticity. Yes. And, and not so much, I mean, it is listening. You know, you're sit every day, you're like writing, you're trying to create like a new way of living in that, in right. that program and mm -hmm. come up with three specific things that you are going to be embodying. Um, and I just remember things coming up that I was always, um, I'm attracted to very strong people with a lot of opinions mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I, it came up that, Oh, as a child, even though my fabulous parents, you know, family life, like I, I was had a very fortunate upbringing, but, um, didn't feel like I really had a voice, yeah. um, you know, because my, my, um, my father just was a very strong person with a lot of opinions. And then I just right. gravitated to people, my, my best friends, you know, everyone seemed to, so I was always looking outward, you know, and not trusting yeah. my voice. I didn't have one. And I started to find that then during that training. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's so key. And I think, I mean, you bring up a good point and there's no judgment about how, you know, how any of us are raised, but I think we, if we don't learn that from an early age, how to tune in and trust, it it just gets harder and harder the older we get. And I think yeah. a program like a yoga yoga teacher training program where you really are just fully immersed in what essentially is a new way of thinking. I mean, obviously you're learning yeah. the poses and you're learning how to teach and all that. And, and that's important, of course. But for me, going through teacher training too, I, the the opportunity to think differently and to say like, wait a minute, like what is really coming up for me on the mat or off the mat? Because it happens yeah. all the time. And, and how do I feel about that? Like, how can I tune back right. inward to see? And it's a, it's a skill for sure. And I think, you know, what you said when we first started chatting about there's an ebb and flow to confidence mm -hmm. that goes hand in hand with that. Sometimes it's so easy to, tune in and tap in and say, oh yeah, this is for me or this isn't. And then other times it's like, where is my voice? Because there's yeah. so much chatter around me. It's really hard to zero in on that. Well, I don't know if you've read the um, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Yet. No, not yet. Okay. It's on my list. I keep oh. hearing people love it. I know. Yeah. She's definitely like at a, a high point because I, I think everyone's talking about it and she's on so many shows, but um, yeah. I did read it and she had this really awesome story about her son had a bunch of kids over. She stuck her head in the room and said, um, is anyone hungry? And all the boys were looking at the TV and they kept looking at the TV and they said, I'm hungry. The girls looked around the room at oh. each other to decide whether they were hungry. And then like right. somehow by like, uh, you know, telepathy, one girl was voted the, the one to answer, you know, but, it, <laughs> but it's ingrained, I think it's more probably in, in girls um, mm -hmm. than boys to get that outside validation. Um, yes. so I think it's something that, that really has to be, it's a self-awareness, you know, thing that you have to become aware that you're yeah. you are doing that. And then you can like, you know, right. stop, change, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the awareness of, yeah, that's wild. True. I'm sure it happens a lot. Um, do you have, so you mentioned spending a few quiet moments each morning. Do you yeah. have a ritual that you follow in the morning? Um, Centered. So yes, I, I do. And well, I did, but now I have this new puppy. So it's gotten a little <laughs> bit challenging. But <laughs> um, I do like getting up early. I don't mind being up in the dark. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I kind of I don't even turn lights on. I, I am a big coffee drinker. I usually get my coffee. Um, and I sit and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I just have that coffee and sit. I, I write, um, I have an app now that I'm using for as a gratitude journal. Oh, cool. um, so it's a journaling app, but I just, every day I go on, it kind of it reminds me to, like it gives me right. a notification. But I go on, I just jot down three things to be grateful for. And as you know, in my yoga classes, I always have people doing that because there's, there's scientific proof that yeah. um, having a gratitude practice makes you a more, um, you know, happier 
person uh, in general. So I, I do find when I don't start my day that way, there is something a little amiss. Yeah. Um, I try to meditate and, you know, that can be for however long it feels right to me. I don't have like a set amount of time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just, um, so way back when I was in uh, college, I, I um, got trained in transcendental meditation. Oh, so sometimes cool. I take yeah, my, I, I have to thank a very old ex-boyfriend for that one because um, we did that together. But like, it's pretty amazing how, how it, has, uh, it has affected my life. I, I used it in college, you know, before tests. And, um, but that was back in my, you know, early 20s that I started meditating. And yeah. uh, it turns out my, my grandfather actually also um, did transcendental meditation, which I didn't know about till, till later. Um, so I either use that mantra that I was given for, from that experience. Um, yeah. Sometimes I use an app and just have it on like birds. There's like a one app that just has like sounds that I like. Um, yeah, sounds. You know, and, and it, yeah. And I've been trying other things too, but um, I'll, I'll take as long as, you know, I feel like I can. And sometimes my mind is open to it and sometimes it is not. And yeah. I, I, I'm not hard on myself about it. Good. Yeah. I, that's so key. I'm so glad that you said that. And I, you know, it's okay if it looks different each day. I mean, yeah. that that's that inner voice saying yes. today we're going to do it for this long and right. another day it might be half that amount. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that the benefits are more or less. They might just right. be different. And I think that inner voice comes out at different times too. It doesn't always come out during those quiet, quiet times. Yeah. But it opens up the, those quiet times open you up to just being aware. And then when that inner voice does show itself, wherever you are, you might actually hear it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I remember, yeah. Um, so I recently, as you said, I did, uh, this past December started working for the Lake House as the director of guest experiences. Um, prior to that, like I was, I was exploring a couple things and I just remember dropping my daughter off at school and all of a sudden the strong voice like just told me to pursue, you know, what I, where I am now in a really strong way when I, I was, you know, having a couple different options and it was just like, this is what you're doing. You know? yeah. yeah. It takes all the pressure off. Like, yeah. We get in our head about stuff like that, you know, understandably so that's what our brain is meant to do but yeah when you can just tune in and and it's yeah. so crystal clear but I, you bring up a good point I think you've got to practice those moments of stillness so that you yeah. know you know what does it sound like what does it feel like and so that when you are kind of you know living day to day going through you know different responsibilities different habits roles rituals whatever they yeah. are you've you're more open to hearing it yeah. Right. And, and I think, you know, sometimes when you're going through something and you're actually, you know, you're seeking this outside information or that un outside information is coming to you without at being asked, um, you don't know if that, that outside information is coming from other people's place of fear or whatever yes. it might be that really has nothing to do with you. And so it's like, you need to take that time to just be like knowing that truth within you to be able to say, no, 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 that is not me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, that was one of the biggest aha moments for me that, you know, learning that other people's behavior is really a reflection of them and has nothing yeah. to do with me that I like so many light bulbs went off when, yeah. when that all came together for me. And, and I think the fear piece of it, like you said, is that is so powerful, uh, even when it's, I mean, it's powerful when it's your own, but it's, powerful when it's someone else's too and and mm -hmm. to be able to say oh hang on that's not that's actually not me that's you know right. it's not my story it's not my truth and you know empowering yourself to believe that is that's so amazing yeah you know and just thinking about confidence again especially right now um how yoga teachers are all so many are out there videoing themselves and teaching and we were just talking how you know it's not comfortable. <laughs> like some right. of it does not feel comfortable to me personally. And I've resisted, I've tried a little bit, I've resisted a lot. Um, yeah. You know, 
and and it does there is a confidence thing in there there's something that's like not allowing me to like fully just dive into it i don't know exactly what but just being vulnerable like i think confidence is playing into that and right. there's no reason like i, hey. I you know I've been teaching for like a very long time now. So it's very funny how um, these little th like yes. things come in and, uh, and, and maybe it comes back down to like a very fundamental fear <laughs> we all have is like fear of judgment and like being on this really big platform, you know, puts you out there in a big way. <laughs> for that. Yeah, yeah. So much of it, and I know you talk a lot about this in, in your classes, and I talk a lot about it with my clients, but it's the stories that we're telling ourselves. Like, it's what yeah. we are, it's that narrative that's running, you know, sometimes in the background, sometimes right up front that says like, ooh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not good enough, or I might, you know, be judged, or I might be, you know, that innate human fear of like being, you know, kicked out of the group right. is, is, is real. For a lot of us and yeah yeah I think this you know we're recording this during the the global pandemic and I think you know being at home has has brought up a lot of different emotions for everybody yeah. and it's interesting to see you know what is coming up for each of us because you know the quarantine or the pandemic may be kind of the trigger but at the root you know, to your point about there's something that's happening that is causing resistance yeah. you know, to getting on video. There's, there's something else going on there. And it's, you know, if you can, again, tune into that inner voice and, and practice that stillness, yeah. there's, there's opportunity there. In this period of time, I don't, have you tried um, or heard of it, Taryn Toomey, the class? Yes, I have heard of it. I haven't tried it myself yet, though. So I figured, you know, this is a good time to experiment with all kinds of different wellness opportunities. You know, so yeah. much is online. So I did try a couple classes and it was really interesting. It made me think if you were in a, a class with people, I feel like mm -hmm. at least that experience would be a little different because those things come up. Like you're, you're being very vocal in that class. Um, okay. You know, you're moving and dancing, a little, not, like not dancing, but you're moving in certain ways and then you find stillness. So it's very much kind of, you get yourself in a place of like, um, you know, maybe resistance and then you stop and you listen. And the class is back and forth doing that. So it's fascinating. Oh, but when you're in your own house, it's much easier to like, you know, make groaning noises while you're exercising than when you're in like a whole room full of people <laughs> where that judge, yeah. your judgment and whatever that we all have come comes up. Right. And then right. you're like addressing what those emotions are. Uh, so I can yeah. see it's super impactful, but I loved that kind of play with, um, and I talk about that in my yoga classes too. Sometimes we'll do like sequences that are just moving, 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 and then stop in stillness and just listen and quiet and what comes up. Right. And um, right. I do love that back and forth. Yeah, there's something powerful about that. And I think it helps to get you out of your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the piece certainly but that back and forth where you're not quite sure what's coming next right you've got the invitation to you know move 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 and then pause yeah that's really powerful yeah because yeah. that's helpful for all of us to get yeah definitely sort of up here and, and down towards the yeah. level a little bit and more. what I found <laughs> interesting about that particular class the class is um she is a yoga trained teacher but it, it really is a combination of different things it's very somatic you know it's movement yeah. and um embodiment but it's not true yoga and it's not true it's like really interestingly pieced together that i feel um is accessible by a lot of people yeah. nice it's interesting. yeah anyway and that is online so friends watching um, yeah i thought it, looking I, for something new yeah, yeah, the class. It was interesting to me. I just recently discovered it. So <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. I know this has been a cool time to kind of like step outside the box of what, what you normally yeah. do health and fitness wise. And there's yeah. so much out there and there's so many, you know, phenomenal teachers who are sharing content and and yeah. classes and you know giving their expertise it's really yeah and it really might have changed 
this might have changed the way things, you know, go forward. Like, I, I'll be yeah. curious. Me too. Yep. Although I really sure. need to get into a class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is something about, we were talking before we started recording today about, you know, being able to share those really high, good, powerful vibes yeah. live, like face to face instead of face to face through a screen. So, <laughs> yeah. There is something very appealing about that being together. Yeah. In person. Yeah. yeah that's so neat. Um, Jen, I, uh, I love that you've brought up, you know, the fear of judgment during this call. Is there anything that you can offer our friends who are watching, you know, with regard to either what you found helpful or what you've, you know, invited your yoga students and even, you know, I love kind of like the crossbreed based on your background of people who you've come in contact with. So is there anything that you can offer as, as far as how to, get through that kind of mm. the other side. It's really interesting. I think like from a teacher perspective, I really lost that during our training that we did together actually, because I just start, I think feeling that people really want to see you succeed. Majority of people yeah. do, you know? So like just knowing that that is a truth, you know, and just kind of approaching things that way. Um, mm -hmm. And I also would, uh, when I was a new teacher and I'd get the butterflies, which I think I still occasionally do. I think that it doesn't all really end um, 100%. Yeah. Uh, but switching that like feeling of potential like fear to excitement and then owning yes. it as excitement really helps turning it around. Yeah. Um, but other things, I think just being feeling powerful feeling strong you know whether it's the meditation and mindfully like strong or i really love physically challenging myself i've just always been an athlete and love being outdoors yeah. and so just getting getting my body moving and in myself i think really mm -hmm. helps me just kind of not care right yeah. right knowing that you're capable yeah yeah, yeah. i love that that's beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I have, I have so many things I want to chat with you about. <laughs> um, what is, has there anything, is there anything that's coming up for you during this kind of new reality we're in that you have kind of seen light around or that's been helpful? I know you're into that's personal an interesting growth. Question. And, um, yeah. You know, it hasn't triggered me um, so much. I think, you know, it's, I think I'm a positive person and I keep thinking about the positive outcomes of a lot of this. Yeah. And I mean, obviously mm -hmm. there's been a lot of suffering, so I'm not downplaying yes, the fact that some people really had some tragedies and suffering and trauma. Um, but yeah. I just feel like our world has changed and it won't ever really go back. And some fundamental things that I think we all were like, there's no way this is ever going to change. I, you know, my, my, I've got a son in college and my daughter is going to head out. Um, she'll be a senior this next year. Um, and I keep thinking like, no one thought like, how can colleges ever change? But like now they're going to be forced to, you know, um, because yeah. And there's so many other things, you know, just in terms of um, the earth itself and whatever. So I, I think, you know, those are, those, that's kind of where my thoughts go. I'm a homebody yeah. by nature. I mean, I love being outdoors. So I've been taking walks. I love being with my family and I don't mind being alone. So like it hasn't affected right. me. But granted, again, like I have space to be by myself and um, I have an area where it's not overly populated. So I know I'm in a very fortunate situation in this, but, um, yeah, yep. but it, it hasn't really triggered anything. I'm excited with my new position to be able to, you know, help people feel that wellness and strength and get outdoors and, and, you mm -hmm. know, feel that embodiment. Um, you know, I, I, the, obviously the hospitality industry has suffered quite a bit, um, mm -hmm. we being a new hotel, like uh, being built, we're in a different situation, but we're in the same situation is that the world of hospitality has changed and not really knowing, you know, when people will really feel comfortable to join us. And, 
Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, you know, I, I feel, I guess the biggest thing that everyone has, has had to deal with is just uncertainty. And it's just, that's yeah. still there. It's just still there. I, I feel like I've been dealing with that so often anyway that I, I'm not like thrown off kilter by it, but mm -hmm. I, I know it yeah. many people are. I mean, it's a very uncomfortable right. feeling. Yeah, it is. It can be very uncomfortable. I think, you know, by our nature, we, most humans, you know, there, there's that like illusion of control. And, and until, yeah. you know, the rug is kind of pulled a little bit, I think right. we don't realize that, you know, we have control over very few things. And right. you know, certainly what's happening internally and what's happening, you know, between our ears is that is always something that we have control over and, and being able to look at situations and not diminishing, you know, how horrific they are, right. but allowing yourself also to see, you know, I, I hate to say silver lining because I feel like that's a little bit Pollyanna, but I, you know, what is it that, that I can focus on that helps me be of service not only to myself, but also to my, the people around me, my community, and then even extending it, you know, broader than that, like the global community. Right. And I think, you know, tapping into, you know, knowing that there's always uncertainty, that we always had a lack of control, but then still kind of prioritizing the positive piece, which I think to some people comes really naturally and to others, not at all. It's yeah. you know, a practice. And it can be, it, you know, you don't have to, that doesn't have to be something that you're kind of born with that, you know, those glasses, so to speak. Yeah. And I think that it's interesting because we all have, I think, had to deal a little bit with um, what not only are our truths, but our, our, our non-negotiables, like what do we yes. need in our life and what can we let go, you know, because there's mm -hmm. had to. Um, and I just right. wonder, just as a collective, you know, group, everybody, the world, like how that will change people, you know, if people have been able to get into them, their, their head and, and go through some things or mm -hmm. uh, when we finally can, you know, be together, will we see people trying to understand themselves better and grow and I don't know. I just, right. I feel like there's a lot of potential for amazing growth, you know? I think so too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is keeping you motivated, you know, given the uncertainty, uh, given the lack of control and, and that things are, you know, we are living in a new reality right now. What is keeping you motivated, not only to the things like your morning ritual, but even the positivity piece? What is it for you that, that keeps um, your spark lit? Yeah, well, I do. I tend to get outside no matter what, even if there's a drizzle. I just need the outdoors. I need like the air. Um, I'm a four weather, you know, exercise outdoor kind of person. So that is a crucial thing. But something that um, I've been doing for years now is I have an accountability partner. So I would say that meeting regularly and just um, envisioning, you know, new goals or new, new ways of being or whatever it might be, and having someone uh, keep me accountable um, mm -hmm. definitely is a motivating factor too. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, I would say that it, we haven't been able to meet in person to do this, my, my friend and I, but it's just something that like we normally regularly do that. And, um, and it keeps me dreaming. I think that's like, a, yeah. I, I'm, I think keeping a, you know, a dream and sometimes I've struggled with what that dream might be. Like you lose it a little right. and then, um, and then again, the sitting comes into play and the quiet, <laughs> um, and the waiting and the uncertainty. And then it comes back and you're like, okay, here's the next dream. You know, this is what I'm right. going to do. So right now I'm just yeah. really excited about my new role and this, um, this job, uh, and this opportunity of blending everything that I love together because I'll be able to teach yoga, I'll be outdoors leading hikes, I'll be, you know, teaching wellness and meditation and other things. Um, so I'm able to do all of that in one place and, and, to, um, and to meet all kinds of interesting people. So I'm, I'm really excited. That's so cool. I love that too, like the balance between 
you've got something kind of on the horizon coming up that's really exciting. And then knowing that you're here now living in this present moment. So what is it that you, you know, can be doing day to day that is going to, you know, help support that experience and yes. make it all the better for yourself. I think it's a, it's, it's a balancing act for sure. And, and it, one that I think, yeah. And I was going to say that um, you're absolutely right. And I, I am like, I, I did sign up for um, uh, a yoga Nidra certification because I've, I've been teaching it, but I wanted to get a little deep, deeper into that. I think it's such a nourishing yeah. practice. Um, yes. and when I was going through some struggles, uh, I used it regularly and I felt it just so healing and, um, helpful. So I'm doing that right now, but this, I, one thing that this period of time has brought up, not, it's actually, it's anti-motivating. It's, it's, there's so many, there's so much pressure to actually do right now. Um, yeah. and I am giving myself, allowing myself the, the break, you know, allowing yep. myself to ease off of that because I feel like that it's too much pressure. And it's this period right. of time, you don't know, like you're getting, you are in uncertainty and it is affecting us, whether we, um, you know, fully embody that or not, like, you know, distraction, yep. I think is definitely part of it for me, like trying to stay, um, you know, just really, on task for a long, long period of time. I feel all pulled. Granted, I have a puppy too, so that has been part of the pull. But um, yep. but yeah, I just feel like I think some of it is like, how can you allow yourself to be worthy without doing? Um, yes, because you you know, there's so much pressure to make sourdough bread right now. <laughs> yeah, and learn a new instrument and be fluent in a new language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's such a good point. I think it's a balance again, right? And and I think, you know, the again, those moments of stillness and of quiet mm -hmm. where you tune in and say, okay, what is it that I need today? And, yeah. You know, and it doesn't, we don't have to be on the go all the time. You know, we, yeah. are, we are worthy of taking the break and the break enables us to perform that much better when we are, you know, working on something maybe that requires a little more effort and attention. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, again, even with all the online yoga classes, there's like a little bit of pressure there, I find. Like, I know mm -hmm. so many people, so I'm like, oh, I should, I should. And I'm like, okay, let's take that word out and just right. feel what I need and do what I need and not what I should. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the tuning in is huge. I'm glad that you brought that up. I think that's so important. Yeah. Anything else that you want to share with people watching today that we didn't touch on? Oh, um, I don't think so. Not to, no. not to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, I did want to, you know, you mentioned Finger Lakes to Escapes. It is um, a company that I, I did sell in January. So um, it, it was yes. my baby. It's still out there. Um, and uh, Robin Page is the owner and she's going to be doing incredible things. But the essence yeah. of that company is really my essence. You know, it's, um, we had like three mottos uh, that we used for, um, yeah, promotion, but it really was our mantra, which is like, find your strength. And for me, that was always about pushing yourself a little in a physical way, usually. Um, mm -hmm. Just, I always found as an athlete, you know, when I was out there, you know, either training for a marathon or whatever it was like, and, and actually that Taryn Toomey class is like that you push yourself a little out of your comfort zone physically and you become, mm -hmm. you feel, you know, you just feel that empowerment. Um, and then nurturing your peace is the other second one, which is obviously that tuning in and that finding the quiet and the listening and then feeding mm -hmm. your soul, which could mean anything. It can be mean having a, another cup of coffee or a glass of wine or a deep or dark chocolate, or it could be, you know, finding nature or being with your favorite people, but finding those mm -hmm. things that light you up. Um, and, yeah. and those three pieces to me, I, I am bringing that to the lake house. I'm bringing those things to whatever I do. Cause those are really the things that are important to me. 
Right, right. Your pillars. I love that. Yeah. Those are really powerful. Yeah. And I love, you've always done a great job of this in your classes, that, that integration of mind, body, and soul is, you know, I mean, certainly there's, there's roots of that in yoga, but I think even, you know, if you're not a practicing yogi, that integration is still so powerful in, you know, honoring your truth and, and keeping yourself in balance and in alignment and, you know, finding, I love the idea of finding, you know, what are the uh, three is a great number, I think, you know, what are the three things that can make up, you know, the essence of you and, and giving that some thought. And I think, you know, you mentioned earlier in our chat, you know, what are the non-negotiables right now mm -hmm. that we're, you know, figuring out and, and being rooted in, you know, kind of those core principles for yourself is yeah. such a good way to, figure out what are the non-negotiables and how can I, you know, kind of get out of the weeds and, and really thrive because I know that, you know, this aligns me with one or all three of what really matters. Yeah, absolutely. And dreaming, you know, and, 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 and I think, you know, having those dreams and not just dreaming, but like writing them down and putting them out there in the universe. I just find that super powerful. It's always led me to that next yeah. thing. You know, and yep. I might lose the piece of paper that I wrote, but then I'll find it years later. And I'm like, how did I manifested these things just by writing them down and losing the paper and they, they appear. And I, I'm, I'm not a big law of attraction person, but I, but that I do know happens <laughs> to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's something to be yeah. said, um, but about yeah. just like taking that time to dream and, and put it out there. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And to have somebody in your life who you love and trust and who has, you know, your highest self in mind to hold you accountable for that yeah. is, I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So cool. Jen, tell us where our friends can find you. And if you want to give like the brief timeline, so we're recording this in mid-May of 2020, um, what's happening with the lake house and when friends can start taking advantage of everything yes. else to offer. So uh, the Lake House, we're opening in stages and um, our, the Sandbar, which is uh, one of our, it's one, been a favorite for local people for a long time. Lots of good live music during the week and great food right by the water. That's opening up July 1st. Um, and then other parts of the hotel opening up in different stages. Uh, we'll be having people stay with us starting in August. So we're mm -hmm. really, really excited about that. So yes, um, you could find me at the Lake House, uh, which is jhess at uh, lakehousecdga.com. Um, Perfect. I no longer have my business, so I don't have my uh, website to direct you to, but you can find me um, I, I've been teaching locally, but I'm going to be, uh, you know, you can't find me in the studio right now, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll share links in the okay. uh, video description for this for all of your social Fantastic. platforms. So yeah, Thank you. friends connect with Jen. She, I'm sure you can tell from this chat is such a bright light and brings so much heart to everything that she does. So I wholeheartedly encourage you to seek her out. Oh, thank you, Meg. I feel the same. Oh, thank you so much for being here today. I loved our conversation. So many good insights and, and I knew it would be inspiring and it, it definitely was. So thank oh, you for thank that. Thank you so much. Thanks for allowing me this opportunity. Oh, absolutely. So glad to have you.